Welcome to the SQL Challenge on Tuning a Stored Procedure. I'm Kendra Little from SQLWorkbooks.com, and we are now going to step through setting up the challenge and outlining your mission. The first thing to do is to set up a few things in the script. We are going to create the SQL challenge database. And this script for the purpose of rerunability says, hey, if this database already exists, if there is a database named SQL challenge, we are gonna blow it away. So hopefully you don't have any critical information in a database named SQL challenge. You also wanna run this on a dedicated test instance so that you don't bother anyone else too. After we create the SQL challenge database, we're turning on query store. And that is so that if you want to use any of the information that query store collects as part of your tuning process, it will be available to you. We are now going to create a stored procedure. Before we do that, here is the outline of what your challenge is. We have a couple different ways to execute the procedure. And one sample is fast and the other sample is slow. And your mission is to figure out what can I do to speed up the slow execution of this? This stored procedure has many different statements in it, including some that are in a loop. So part of your challenge is just figuring out, hey, what is the biggest problem with this stored procedure? And in the real world, that is often one of the things that can be frustrating and tricky is when we have a somewhat complex bit of code, figuring out, oh, which part of this is actually the slow part, just looking at the T-SQL. It could be a lot of these, right? That is part of the challenge. So figure out what the biggest performance problem is for the procedure when it's slow, and then fix it as quickly as you can in your favorite way. You can change as many things as you want in this store procedure. You certainly don't have to fix all the problems though. This store procedure actually has a lot of problems and just assume that this store procedure is used by people who are running it internally. They're all trusted employees. This isn't the type of procedure that's like sitting behind a web page because this store procedure allows for massive SQL injection. This is a performance tuning problem, not a security problem. So your challenge is really to make it fast, not to make it secure, because trust me, it has some glaring flaws in there. Also, assume that the procedure only needs to be run from one session at a time. That is currently the state with the original. You don't have to fix that. Assume that this is only occasionally run by one person using a dedicated instance. They are not going to collide with anyone else. There's a lot in this procedure. So let's go ahead and create the procedure. I'm going to use the SQL challenge database. And first, I'm going to highlight all of the code in the dbo.tuneme procedure. You are completely welcome to, by the way, to leave dbo.tuneme in place and just create a new procedure with a slightly different name. I'm using dbo.tuneme revised in the sample solutions, but if you want to do that, it can make your life easier in case you want to go back and say, oh, I'm going to run the original again. You can still leave it there. You don't have to just alter dbo.tuneme. You do want to maintain all the functionality of dbo.tuneme. So let's step through what it does. It takes a number of parameters, including that dynamic SQL bit we're going to use there that I even named the parameter modification SQL injection just to, this isn't something that we would ever put behind a web app, right? We take a number of parameters there. And honestly, what this procedure is, is I very quickly wrote some code a while back to do some testing. And this is one of the variants that I was doing. And what I wanted to know was, all right, if I populate a table and then I run a modification against it and I wanted to test different modifications, so the modification I happened to be testing was a delete statement. If I put some rows in a table and then I modify it and then I do some different index maintenance operations, I do an index reorg and then I do an offline index rebuild and then I do an online index rebuild. Between these operations, what data pages is it using and will it reuse them? So if I reorganize the index, can I see that it is using some of the same data pages? Okay, what if I rebuild it offline? Okay, what if I rebuild it online? What this procedure does is it looks and says, 
is there a table named dbo.indexMainTests? If there is, I'm just going to recreate it. That is recreated every time this procedure runs. And that is part of why if this was going to be running from different sessions at the same time, hey, this is a shared user database table, right? <laughs> so that's part of why this doesn't support concurrent uh, runs of the procedure. Then we go ahead and recreate it. And our, te our test table is really quite simple. It has an ID column. It has a filler column. And then we're going to add some rows to it. We're doing a loop here. And we take a parameter in for the number of rows. We're going to populate the specified number of rows in a loop. We are then going to go ahead and create an index with the fill factor specified in the parameters as well. Because I was doing my testing, I was like, oh, yeah, I may want to use different fill factors and see how they impact this. We then run the dynamic SQL there to create that index. And now we start populating temp tables. After creating and populating the table, I use an undocumented dynamic management view to check out, hey, what are the page IDs for the pages that are allocated right now in the current database for the index main test objects, I'm only interested in data pages that are allocated. So I record those in a temp table named page numbers underscore one. Then I do the modification that has been passed in. And there's also a parameter that specifies the number of times that it can run that modification. Depending on what the modification is, it might be interesting if it was run multiple times. So that is now run uh, via SP execute SQL. Next up, we figure out, okay, after the modification, what page numbers is it using now? And we put that into a second temp table named page numbers underscore two. So we now have two different temp tables, page numbers underscore one and page numbers underscore two. And we're gonna have even more. Now we start in on the index maintenance. We perform an alter index reorganize. And then we figure, say, OK, after the reorganize, what do we have allocated now? What page numbers are in use now? And we put those into page numbers three. Then we do an offline rebuild of the index. Guess what? We're going to then, after doing an offline rebuild, we're going to check the page numbers, put those into page numbers underscore four. And then finally, we do an online rebuild of the index. Now we've got rebuild with online equals on. And then we take a final sample and put the data into a temp table named page numbers underscore five. So now we've got page numbers underscore one to five. And we have a final query that looks at what are the page numbers that we have in all of the temp tables and where did they appear in the different tests? So we're going to return one column. The first column shows what is the page number. The second column says, OK, if the page numbers were in the initial index, just right after it was populated, we are going to have for the pages that are there, we are going to display page exists. Then we've got another column for after running the modification that was passed in, another column for after the reorg, another column for after the online rebuild, and then finally, or we've got after the offline rebuild and then after the online rebuild. So that we're, we've got a table, we've got our page numbers in one column, and then we've got different columns showing when they were used at different points. Let's go ahead and run an example of this so you can look at the output. You have two different ways to run this procedure to test with. We have one version that's fast. I'm going to go ahead and run dbo.tuneme. And, and your challenge is to run these with the exact parameters given. So for when this is slow, you want to make it fast with these exact parameters. So it's fast when we have 1,000 rows passed in. If I increase this to 100,000 rows, and then it's going to get slower. Let's take a look at what the durations look like on my instance. Well, <laughs> for the fast execution, SQL Server Management Studio is saying, hey, this returns in zero seconds. So if we want to be a little more exact about this, I can do set statistics time and IO on on my session here. And let's go ahead and run that. And now after I run it, 
I can get some output to my messages tab about what's going on here. Now notice my stored procedure is showing me stuff every time it runs that loop. But if I go to the very end here, I can see that currently with all of this output spewing out, the CPU time is 125 milliseconds when it's fast. And having statistics IO time on may have impacted it a bit, but you know, 125 milliseconds of CPU time ain't that bad. Elapsed time is showing as 732 milliseconds. I'm going to go ahead and turn statistics IO and time off because I'm not going to need this level of granularity when it's slow. And I just don't even want the possibility of that skewing my timing to be there. So I'm going to go ahead and run this with slightly different numbers. So we've got not only is my number of rows going up from 1,000 to 100,000, but notice I've slightly changed my fill factor from 80 to 90. I've just varied what the test is. These values aren't good and bad. I also have slightly modified my delete statement so that I'm actually deleting fewer rows from it. Uh, I'm deleting rows in every increment of five. So it's not like this, I've changed multiple parameters here for fast and slow, but your challenge is to figure out how to speed up the one who's slow with these parameters. So I've started this off and it's running and it's running and it's running. And what which part is it on? Well, I, I, don't know right now. <laughs> Looking at my messages tab, this is one of the interesting challenges when tuning a stored procedure with multiple statements in it is, huh, which part of it is the slowest part? It's not necessarily readily apparent to the one who's executing it, right? But now it's been going for 30 seconds with these slow parameters. How in the world can I get this to speed up? Well, on my instance, this takes about a minute to run for the slow execution of this. And hmm, yeah, we're at 50 seconds almost right now. It's going to take about 10 more. And part of the challenge, the first thing I want you to do is that assessment of, okay, I need to figure out which part of this is the slowest part because that's the part I'm going to tackle to speed up the performance. Now this run's taking a little longer than normal. This often ends at about one minute, but this time we got one minute, nine seconds. And although this slow version of the procedure, it is totally true that this returns almost 21,000 rows, but trust me, you can make this faster than this. I'm not saying that the code is pretty. In fact, this code really needs your help. So dig in, get your hands dirty, and see what you can do to speed up dbo.tuneme. It's counting on you. <laughs> please, please save my terrible code. And I'll see you in the next video to talk through solutions that I came up with and then you can compare them to yours. You may still like yours better, that's totally cool. See you then to talk over different solutions. <laughs>